I would like to invite IGVA Executive Director to thank our panelists for this excellent discussion, even though a bit short, but it was uh, one of the beginnings. We'll keep the discussion going. And the IGVA Executive Director, Ignacio Parker, if he could join the... <laughs> ah, he was... <laughs> looking for you uh, for the closing remarks of this annual conference. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you, Mirella. And thank you very much, Hazel, Misikir, and, uh, and Sarah. Good God, it's Friday, isn't it? And you still have another guy to speak to you, you know? Uh, with apologies, is it all right if we go about five to seven minutes over time? Is that a problem from anybody? No? If you leave, I won't be taking note of who's leaving. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, a, a really short wrap up of some of the points. There's been so much that has been exchanged, but I took seven points. Look, how is IGVA going to follow up on some of the discussions here? And then we would have about three hours to thank each other and so on. <laughs> but the, the top points is that there's not enough money, but there's not enough money that arrives in the right place, in the right way, and at the right time. Second point, we're struggling with tough questions, and we have been faced with these for decades. The change of organizational culture and the internal plumbing. I can't remember who said the internal plumbing. And the change of mindset. Also, how to, how to link to long-term solutions, how to localize, how to put affected people at the center of everything we do. Now, given these challenges, how can we act as NGOs and collectively? No surprises. Three big uh, elements here. We need to do even better with what we have. The second, we need to continue to push for reducing the burdens on the humanitarian system. And thirdly, we need to find new sources of funding to meet humanitarian need. And this, the, the last point, was less developed during the, this uh, conference, but we did really focus much more on the two first elements. Now, do even better with what we have. And there I have four of my seven or eight points, I can't remember now. The commitments, one, the commitments include, included in initiatives such as the Grand Bargain are critical to implement to make this happen. Go back to uh, panel second panel, and there are, in fact, areas of success. Uh, and this is important to recognize as a validation that we can use the grand bargain effectively if there is the will to do it, and heard a lot of will to do it uh, uh, today from all partners that were here. We need to continue to sharpen the grand bargain to increase our efficiency in the process and improve our chance of meeting objectives. We have to connect better at the local level on the grand bargain. What will success look in 2026? So that will be the, uh, the 10 years anniversary of the grand bargain. And as we engage among grand bargain signatories on the future, clear milestones, commitments, and accountability measures are critical. Second point. Top priorities include ensuring funding that is better matched to the reality of humanitarian contexts. I hope you go back home hearing again and again the illustrations by uh, Taiba, but also by uh, Jamil and, uh, and others. Thirdly, we as NGOs also need to do our part okay, to ensure that we work appropriately with our own local partners passing through quality funding, covering the real costs of humanitarian operations, and sharing humanitarian finance data. Four, on principled partnership. We heard just now intentional decisions of key players, and they will move the needle, if not yet bulldozing the wall, as uh, Misikir would have wanted. Uh, and, and we have heard, heard and r reminded that clear sense of urgency for this to happen. We really appreciation um, for the honesty of the discussion, the one we've just had, on the partnership and on the complementarity of structures, on the, sorry, complexity 
of structures and organizations, and well noted that uh, complicated organization is not the same as complexity of an organization. We can better address the complicated part of it than the complex. <laughs> Thanks, Mirella, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, around continuing to push for reducing the burdens on the humanitarian system. So that's my fifth point. We need to work uh, closer with development, peace, climate and other actors to help ensure that these systems are working to minimize the number of people that require humanitarian assistance. It is about roles and responsibilities. Uh, six, um, I can't read what I wrote. <laughs> yeah, I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> the current question uh, about the future of humanitarian action um, is much deeper than operational and technical improvements and dreaming of having technical fixes. Uh, we had today fundamental questions, reflections, and positions of insight, capacity, responsibility, and power. Now, we need to find new sources of funding to meet humanitarian need. That's my seventh point. It's important that we reach out to both traditional and non-traditional funders to explore ways to better fund humanitarians directly and to reduce burdens on humanitarian systems. The eighth point from the panel number three, the access to climate fi financing is work in progress. Other language was really used and very clear for us. Very, very hard. Okay. Very political, as there is a historical responsibility. And uh, th there was the discussion around the engagement of the qu quadruple, quintuple, sextuple nexus. And but important to think holistically, to connect with the different uh, pieces in a non-competitive uh, manner. Um, it, is going, it is, and we recognize that it's a hard balancing, uh, hard balancing act to have. Now, the concrete things for NGOs, for IGVA members. I have eight. One. The discussions we've had today, they inform directly on the NGO contribution to the future of the Grand Bargain continuation. Two, I think it informs a lot also on what IGVA members are engaged with the IGVA 2030, and in particular on the five transformations that the IGVA members voted uh, at the General Assembly in May 2021. <laughs> If you, have another, if you have another 15 minutes, I can go through them. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Three, there was a call again, please sign the Climate Environmental Charter. And there is support, and support which is being prepared also for the implementation, to support you for the implementation of the Charter. Fourth, IGVA will continue as it does every, every year with its learning stream, so the learning stream 23, 20, 24, stay connected. There's follow-ups of discussions that we've had today. Five, of course, IGVA members really appreciation the way you engage in the different platforms, opportunities that are offered to elevate and to, uh, to, to elevate and to bring a collective uh, voice of NGOs, even if there are differences and there's elements of granularity that are uh, different. Six, the outputs of the conference a report and then the, the video of the conference which would be made available and translated in uh, several uh, languages. Seven, <laughs> that's even for further along, the 29th IGVA annual conference is planned for Wednesday 21st of March 2024. There may be some changes. You know there's going to be a change of ED, so you never know. Okay? Uh, eight, uh, on principles of partnerships, the IGVA members will formally, as they do every time, um, recommit to the principles of partnership at the General Assembly 2024, which is on the 20th, 20th of March 2024. In between, they keep on practicing. Okay? 
Now, the words of thanks. Yeah, getting there. The words of thanks, so two hours of words of thanks, yeah. So thank you to all the participants for your time and your expertise. Many of you is time away from uh, home because you don't necessarily live around the block. Great appreciation to the panelists. We had 18 panelists to, uh, today, 17 in person, and it was great to have uh, Matthew with us uh, from uh, Washington. Four sessions, about 50 people uh, had access to the microphone. I think there were 200 people registered, but in interesting on how only a little bit less than 200 turned up. So we're going to be tracking those 80 to tell them what they have missed. <laughs> Uh, and there will be access, of course, by many more with the, uh, the outputs that we are offering of this uh, conference. Um, appreciation to uh, Ambassador Lauber for the negotiation on the good weather. Uh, we haven't yet been able to benefit very much of that as we were in the room. But yeah. Appreciation to Switzerland and to Geneva for welcom welcoming us uh, for the facilitation of the Schengen uh, vi visas and for uh, subsidizing uh, some of the accommodation of the national leaders in Geneva. Appreciation to our core uh, donors, offering flexible and multi-year funding that allow us to organize uh, an annual conference like, uh, like this one. So for, for this year, it's Denmark, it's Norway, it's Belgium, it's Sweden, it's Switzerland. And we really encourage other donors, that even if it's just a small budget line of offering uh, an air flight for people, uh, for national leaders, for also others to be able to come to participate to these elements. Sometimes I feel it's not a very big effort for some just to, to pin that in one of their budget lines. It's not about big MOUs and huge amounts of money, but everybody chipping in will be able to continue and to maintain the diversity of the discussions that we have here in Geneva, but also the uh, events that are organized in the, in the regions. To the House of Peace, so those who didn't know, Maison de la Paix is House of Peace. Isn't it a beautiful uh, word for the support team uh, and the interpreters? And there, I suggest a round of applause. Thank you. And then um, a thanks to the IGVA board members. I don't know if you realized, but the IGVA board members were here almost throughout. I know I just saw one had to leave, and he really went discreetly like that. I have to catch a plane, don't get. <laughs> but really appreciate that the board members of IGVA were here uh, and, uh, and most of the, of the week. To the, to the IGVA team, uh, the more visible uh, colleagues, but also the less visible uh, colleagues, uh, Suli, Milen. Uh, Fiona, Aisha, Fabrice, Edith, Susan, from setting the concept note to running the process to select in a transparent manner the sponsored participants, to the support of the visas, there's so much to do, and le leading it to today. So, <laughs> so safe travel back for those who have to just go round the block, but also for those who uh, have, some of you have two days travel to get back home. And then some are just loving the, the, the weather in Europe and are going to extend and go to Brussels. Eh? So there will be, uh, there are about 30 national leaders that uh, will be leaving by coach tomorrow morning. So for those, just for you to, rem to re I remind you, it's 8.40 uh, at the humanitarian hub or down the, you would see the bus, down the humanitarian hub. And then we would transform this into um, either a party bus or we can, a conference bus. It, it would depend on what, what, what style you, uh, you want. Uh, and I want to take a few more elements. What Maria said, we cannot miss the passion anymore, the sense of urgency. And from Isaiah, learn and learn quickly and we can do it. Have a great weekend and thank you for joining us.